Welcome to the lecture series on the region of the body known as the thorax. I have subdivided this specific series into five main parts. First, I will describe the anatomy of the breast. Second, I will describe the thoracic wall itself and its main functions. Third, I will describe the mediastinum and the heart. Fourth, I will discuss the lungs and how they function in respiration. Finally, I will provide a description of how to understand thoracic anatomy and cross sections important for reading CT images. My name is Carlos Andres Oresquian and I will narrate this lecture series to you. Let's begin with a general introduction of the thorax. Let's start with a general description of the region known as the thorax. It is that region of the body that sits below the neck and above the abdomen. It is what we normally call the chest in a person and the term is derived from the Latin. As with any region of the body, it will have an inlet and an outlet. And let me point out at the outset that sometimes the use of terminology in anatomy can be confusing to the beginning student. The outlet of the thorax is, as just described, an anatomical term reserved to name an aperture. Clinically, however, the term of thoracic outlet is used to describe the region where great vessels and a major nerve plexus exit the thorax, and this region is actually near the inlet. In fact, the term thoracic outlet refers to a syndrome, the thoracic outlet syndrome, and if it is present in a patient, it will impact blood and nerve supply to the upper limb. Anatomists try to be consistent in their description of the body, but understand that clinical practice and history will at times supersede logical explanations. You will need to learn these distinctions as you go forward in your career in medicine. Within the thorax, we have the major organs responsible for the cardiovascular system, the heart and the respiratory system, the lungs. Life is not possible if these two systems are compromised, a fact known to mankind when they entered battle from time immemorial. It is the reason that historical people would use armor to protect their chest from injury. An injury in the chest region could easily lead to a rapid death simply because damage to the cardiovascular and or respiratory systems is incompatible with life. Even today, when our soldiers engage in action on the ground, they still wear armor. That is not to say that death cannot be brought on by injury to other regions of the body, but we know that injuries to the thorax are serious and need to be taken care of right away. Wearing armor may provide those precious minutes a soldier may need to be taken back behind the lines in medical treatment and subsequent survival. We'll go into more detail later into the cardiovascular and respiratory systems in subsequent lectures. This now concludes this very short introduction to the region known as the thorax and we move to specific details of the first lecture in this series, the breasts.